After 20 years of living in high-rise flats, Jim and Kath Price have finally got what they wanted, a home of their own. Those 20 years were a nightmare for Jim Price, a nightmare that took a heavy toll on his health. He recovered only when he moved into what he sees as a real home with real neighbours. But he remembers the bad times vividly. Well, we got to the point where I was having blackouts. Every, I, I finished up two a day, didn't I? Around two a day, yeah. sometimes, some days. And you took your overdoses? I took I had three overdoses, being in flats. I just couldn't stand a bit, the clo closed in. There is a real Coronation Street in Salford, but it's one of the few streets of two up, two down houses left. Since the Second World War, local and national politicians have put their dream of clearing the slums into practice. Two million people in Britain have been moved to estates like this one, where the old community spirit, based on extensive networks of relatives and neighbours, has broken down, leading to graffiti, vandalism and crime. Human excreta in public areas, boarded up flats and muggings are the day-to-day -day reality. But it's not just that, it's people's fear of these things. There's a lot of fear on the estate. I mean, a lot of t tenants are living in, and it's the fear more than anything. I mean, I think on an average, I, I don't think it's it's as bad as people think. The muggings, etc. There are a lot of break-ins and there are muggings, but I think that the fear is worse. Some researchers believe it's not just the gigantism of modern estates that breeds crime. Specific design features, like these walkways, which provide many escape routes for criminals, can they say? encourage crime and therefore people's anxieties. One research group has developed a scale ranging from 0 to 16 to measure these features. For example, we found that all the blocks with a score of 0 haven't reported a single crime in our test year. But those with 13, 14 and 15 are having crime rates, just residential crime alone, not being mugged on the street, of one crime for every five dwellings or more during the year. Scientists are discovering that fears about crime on high-rise estates are leading to psychological illnesses like depression. The loneliness of high-rise living is another cause of mental illness. They may look pretty, but no one knows their neighbours in a high-rise block. It's difficult to make friends. You don't see children out playing because their mothers can't supervise them from the 16th story. We know that millions of people have been moved in this country in the last 30 years, um, there has been no specific research uh, on, on that question. Uh, the only really hard data that exists come from the United States, uh, and it, it's been shown there that, that quite high proportions of people who have moved unwillingly show marked depression for, for a long time. How serious can, can these problems be? Well, they can be very serious. Uh, the, the depression, which I mentioned, can, can be severe, and it can last sometimes for, for several years. It's no wonder high-rise estates become problem estates to be boarded up and written off. Surveys have shown psychiatric symptoms are twice as common among a million people in high-rise blocks. Almost half the mothers living on one estate suffered moderate to severe depression. It's worse among people living in maisonettes. There too, loneliness, fear of crime, noise and lack of privacy take their toll. We were told of one young woman who was repeatedly burgled by drug addicts, stealing money to buy drugs from a dealer who lived nearby. So she was frightened of going out all the time. She wouldn't have any pattern of going out because she didn't want people uh, coming in. And no matter how many times she tried to sort of just pop out to the shops and get what she needed and get back again get to the job centre, whatever she had to do, somebody always managed to get in and get something. She had several locks put on the doors. So in the end, she got to such a stage that she decided that she was going to sit behind the door with a hammer or an axe, and if they came in this time, that she was going to damage them. She got herself to such a point that she just couldn't cope anymore. Come on, then. Come on. A puppy on. called Robbie is just one of the pleasures you know, Jim Price enjoys. <laughs> now he's moved from high-rise flats. Oh, it's different altogether, you know. In the garden, it's like this. I mean, it, it's just like the old Salford, in this, just in this area here where we're living. But you, you get people... 
don't even know them and they've passed and they stopped to talk to you. It's like, uh, it's about the real Salford.